Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our NFL Week 9 preview between the Atlanta Falcons and the Carolina Panthers. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with the Falcons. This will be Steven Jackson's second game back from injury. They're going to need him in the worst way possible. Between the offensive line issues in pass protection and Matt Ryan's sudden case of the bad decisions, it may be smart to lean on that ground game just a little bit more this week versus Carolina and operate off play action in the passing game. Defensively, the Falcons' interior defense will be key. That's both defensive tackles and the Mike Backer as is vital to stop Carolina's ground game. You want to make them one-dimensional, and the way you slow down that spread power game that they run is from within. So I look for defensive tackle Corey Peters, who has been playing at a Pro Bowl-type level this season, to have a huge impact on this ball game. Now let's move over to Carolina in this ball game. And offensive coordinator Mike Shula has done a great job with the Panthers offense and what he has done to spread the field. But you have to give a lot of credit to the players themselves. They've been doing a great job of executing during this three-game winning streak. Now versus Atlanta, the goal will be to attack the perimeter in the running game. I believe that's where the Falcons are most vulnerable. Defensively, the secondary will have their hands full for two reasons. One, the Falcons love to spread the field. And two, the fact that Tony Gonzalez is still playing at a high level. So if you're looking for a unit that will have to bring their A game, look no further than this Panthers secondary. The Atlanta Falcons have to win in the red zone this week versus the Carolina Panthers. And I'm going to draw up two plays that mirror each other in which they can have success in the red zone. I'm going to show you right here a running play, what we like to call fly 25. You're flying the tight end across the formation and you're running the 25 outside zone. So what we're going to do, we're going to bring this tight end in motion. And this is normally versus man. So what you're going to see is this free safety work his way over to get over top of this tight end. Now at the snap of the ball, we're going to have Combo block with the tight end and the tackle on this defensive end. They're combo blocking here, and we're using the tight end to kick out this weak side linebacker. You're also going to have the play side guard work his way up to get this middle backer block. Center is responsible for taking care of the nose tackle, and what we're going to have here, boom, everyone's man on man. And now what we're going to do, we're going to work the backside guard up to the backer, and we're not going to block the strong safety. We're going to use him to reach this defensive end. So we're leaving two guys unblocked versus the run. Fullback is going to lead up in the hole to get the first threat. Back right there, 25. Matt Ryan opens up, hands the ball off. Hopefully the tailback will able to be, be able to get in the end zone. Now, the pass play off of that is what we're going to do here. Same rules apply, but the blocking is going to be a little bit different. What we're going to do now, we're now going to ask... We're going to ask the fullback now to block the weak side backer. Boom. Because we're going to work the tight end up and over to the corner. We're giving Matt Ryan two reads, two-way go on this play action pass. We're asking the fullback to block the weak side backer. Tight end's working up to the corner route. And this tight end that's coming in motion, he's running out to the flat. So there go your two reads. Now the blocking up front. Now what we're going to have, the guard and the center are comboing this nose. We're also going to have the tackle be responsible for the defensive end, and now the tight end is responsible for that strong safety on the backside. So you're keeping yourself well protected. You see how the play action fake goes, giving Matt Ryan a one and a two. And I think that's how the Falcons can win in the red zone this week versus Carolina if they utilize two plays that mirror one another. This week, the Carolina Panthers, number one, have to be able to get pressure on Matt Ryan, and two, they have to be able to cover Tony Gonzalez. I'm going to show you how they can banjo Tony Gonzalez, which is covering him inside out, and also getting pressure with a free safety blitz on Matt Ryan. Now, you see what we have here, pre-snap, cover two, look, Matt Ryan sees two safeties deep, he thinks it's cover two, and remember, this is instructional for the defense. We know the Falcons may not line up in split backs. This is not about the offense. It's about defense and how they can align themselves, get pressure, and cover 88. So don't worry about the formation, but it's mostly instructional about the defense. So that's something you have to keep in mind. Now, like I said, it's cover one, but it's pre-snap cover two. So cover one means manned up on the outside. Panthers will trust their corners to man up on those receivers of the Atlanta Falcons. Here's 88 right here. Going to draw the 88 in the middle. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to get pressure. We're going to send the free safety later on in the cadence, and we're going to banjo cover, which means we're going to play inside-out coverage versus Tony Gonzalez. So what we're going to do up front first, we're going to have the defensive end tilt to self to line up in the seven technique, and he's going to get outside and play, play contain blitz versus uh, contain pressure versus the outside run, and also if Matt Ryan wants to roll out. 
where we're going to have this defensive tackle line up on the inside shoulder of the tackle and push this B gap hard to the outside shoulder of the guard. He's trying to create a double team right here, create havoc. So that's his job. Inside shoulder of the tackle, push to the outside shoulder of the guard. We're going to have this tackle lined up over the nose. His job is to push and slant hard in that A gap. Now we have this defensive end lined up in the five technique. His job is to play contained versus outside run and versus Matt Ryan if he goes out weak side. Because at the latter part of the cadence, we have the free safety walking down and he's a contained blitzer. He's blitzing on the outside responsible for the C gap and also outside contained. Now what we have up here in the middle, weak side backer is responsible to the nearest back to his side, which is this guy. If he goes this way, he has him manned up. Now if he doesn't go anywhere, then he has freedom to blitz this B gap. So you're getting additional pressure as well. Now, when we talk about banjo cover, we're gonna have the Sam backer get outside to his coverage. Now, if the run action, if, there, if this is a play action pass and the run action goes this way, then he has Tony Gonzalez man on man by himself. Now, let's just say it's just a straight drop back pass. He gets back into his zone and the middle linebacker will overread the run and then drop back and banjo cover. So if Tony Gonzalez comes here, you have two guys playing him inside out with the strong safety dropping in the middle of the field. Like I said before, pre-snap cover two, but it's actually cover one. So you see where the Panthers can get pressure on Matt Ryan with four guy, well, five guys, possibly six, and banjo covering 88. I think that's how they can have some success situationally this week versus the Atlanta Falcons. The X Factor for the Falcons will be their first down defense. I believe versus Carolina, they have to make these guys one dimensional. So you win on first down defensively. And you put these guys in second and long, third and long situations. The Panthers want to operate off balance throughout the course of the down and distances, and they still want to run the football on third and short. Now, if you back these guys up, I can trust the Falcons secondary versus the Panthers receiving core. So it's imperative that you win on first down defensively. The X Factor for the Panthers will be their ability to bring pressure off the edge. You look at Greg Hardy and Charles Johnson's ability to get that heat off the line of scrimmage. We know right now the Falcons' offense line is struggling, and we also know that Matt Ryan tends to backpedal and not step up into the pocket, so it's imperative that they get that pressure off the edge this week versus Atlanta. Now here are some coaching points for both teams in this ball game. For the Falcons, you want to avoid both the mental mistakes as well as the physical mistakes. Now your mental mistakes are blown assignments, penalties, turnovers, and the physical mistakes are getting beat at the line of scrimmage on both sides. They have to dominate in a running game and they also have to be able to win those individual matchups defensively to stop the run. And you want to make that Panthers offense one dimensional. We've talked about this before and red zone execution. The Falcons should think in terms of seven and not three. You have to put touchdowns on the board versus Carolina. Now for the Panthers in this ball game, you want to make Tony Gonzalez a non-factor. We talked about that inside the lab. Take away their biggest option and force those receivers to make plays consistently. And that interior offensive line of Carolina can't have an off day. Like I've mentioned before, Corey Peters is playing at a Pro Bowl level. They have to make sure they get him blocked up front in order for their running game to flourish. You want to create opportunities on defense. They've done a great job of that so far this season with sacks and turnovers. They can't have an off day as far as creating those big plays defensively versus Atlanta. I like Carolina in this ball game. Right now, they have one of the better defenses in the game. They're getting teams off the field, they're creating turnovers, and they're also getting sacks. And on offense, Cam Newton is playing at a Pro Bowl level as well, spreading the field. The receivers are stepping up outside of Steve Smith. So I like the Panthers to take care of business at home versus Atlanta. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Panther fan forums and Falcon fan forums for always showing football game plan support.